close video, um, I've been playing with these gorgeous Cosmic Shimmer Iridescent Mica pigments, which I'm pretty sure have been out before, but they've been in those tiny little tubs, um, and you used to get them sort of in a multi-pack with a tiny little soft brush that you could apply them with. Uh, but recently, they have brought out these much larger tubs of them. Do they say how much is in them? 20 millilitres. So I think like the original ones were probably about five, and these are 20, so you get a lot of powder in all of these, and they have brought out some of the original colours they brought out, I don't actually have those ones, um, but they've also brought out four new colours in just their Cosmic Shimmer range in this beautiful, it kind of looks a little bit carnival-y um, and it gives a fantastic um, sunset kind of a look as well if you put them in the right order, yellow, orange, red, purple, you get a gorgeous sunset. But you can also just use combinations of a couple of the colours to get different results or just using one colour as well for different things too. And they also have four colours within um, Helen Colebrook's collection. So she does the gorgeous journaling kind of uh, products and you'll see uh, some of those bits and pieces used on some of the cards that I have got to show you as well. Some of her stencils and ephemera. And I think a few of her stamps actually as well uh, but these are the gorgeous colours within her collection as well so I've got these little swatches that I did just for myself I wasn't actually planning on doing a video but I've got such a pile of samples I thought well I might as well just film a video whilst I've got all of the bits and pieces here so just for my personal use I like to do this kind of a sample when I get new things in and all I do is I write the name at the top I do a scribble of a black alcohol pen just so I can see if it is iridescent um, or if it has that interference in it, is it going to show up differently on black cardstock? You can see that beautiful petal pink gives a blue mica sheen on black, but the others are all pretty much the same colour as they show on white. Maybe this one's a slightly bit golder, but... um. I like to do that just so that I don't have to remember those kind of details and if I come to use them again I can just pull this out and go oh this one looks a different colour on black so I'll make sure to not use it on black or to use it on black depending on what colour I want it to show up. So within Helen Colebrook's collection of these you've got Marine Dream which is this beautiful um, turquoise light oceany kind of a a colour, really really pretty. You've got Petal Pink which you can see has that blue kind of uh, mica sheen when you use it on over the top of black or onto black card whether you're um, stamping in black and then using it over the top of that or whether you're actually just using black card in the first place or whether you've coloured something and you put it over the top of it. Um, that is the gorgeous Petal Pink. Then we have Serene Sky which is um, a slightly purpley kind of a blue. It's more of like um, a shaded lilac kind of colour. If you love your distress colours is a slightly shaded lilac kind of colour. This is kind of salvage patina, maybe kitsch flamingo, shaded lilac, and then this one I guess would be like rustic wildernessy kind of colour, the mossy green. Um, so if you like your distress colours, that's kind of like what I would pair them with if I was pairing them with a distress ink colour. And on these swatches, um, I've done the black and white, and I've just used I just used my little clear mark um, ink pad, but you can use like any mini sticky clear ink, or if you have the uh, Actually, it might not work with that. It might be too juicy. I was going to say the Freestyle um, Ball Tool from WOW or the Mixed Media Brush in the Seth, Seth Apter sort of range. Um, they might be a bit too juicy for this kind of technique, but you just squish a bit of the sticky ink on and brush it on with a soft brush. Um, and that's also another technique you can kind of stamp with your sticky ink and, and do that as well. I also wanted to show to myself that you can use it onto double sided adhesive and literally just you know tip some on or use a soft brush to apply some and then buff it into the double sided tape. This is turning it into a watercolour paint and then splattering with it as well just to show like the differences. I like to have a little swatch like that um, when I get a few new products that I maybe haven't tried before or haven't used these things um, in a while or something. I just want to give them a go. So that is um, the Helen Colbert colours and then the other four new colours. So these ones haven't been out in smaller pots before but they're also bringing out some of their existing colours in the larger pots as well which is I think it's mostly um, you know, typical metallic kind of colours, so silver, gold, bronze, uh, possibly a white one as well. I should actually have looked to see which colours they're coming out with, but I think it's those kind of a colours. Um, and I'll, I'll link everything below uh, when I link all of the products as well, so I'll link all of the other large pot colours as well for you. Um, then this is the other new selection of colours. So we've got a gorgeous yellow, which is called Honey Jade, and I'd say that's probably more like a scattered straw kind of a colour. Then we've got 
um, Carnelian Blaze. I'd probably say that's kind of like a carved pumpkin sort of colour. We've got Ruby Flame, which I'd probably say is sort of festive berries. And then we've got Purple Agate, which I'd say is more of like a wilted violet kind of purple. And you can see here, the Carmelian Blaze has actually got more of like a red mica in it. So it shows up red on the black in the swatches as well. And I don't know what it is about my yellow. I think I mixed it up too much powder to water. You can see it's kind of like flaking off. So if that does happen to you... Um, I'd say maybe go with some kind of like gum arabic if you're turning it into a watercolour to really um, set that mica powder in. But I've only really had that trouble with the yellow. So I feel like maybe when I mixed it up I just had too much uh, powder compared to water with my yellow mixture for doing the watercolouring. Because I also had it on one of the backgrounds that I did as well. But I have a way um, of like sealing in a background if you've done a certain technique that I'll show you later on as well. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful colours. And they're a similar kind of product to the um, Luscious Powders from Indigo Blue. So if you've seen people use those in any kind of techniques, um, you might want to you know, give these a go as an alternative to them as well. Um, or you could use them in a similar way to Pixie Powders um, or Nouveau Shimmer Powders and stuff as well. They just only have the mica in them though. They don't have the... Um, like actual colour that bursts out of them you know with a pixie powder you spray it with water and like all of the colour bursts out as well as the mica moving around these don't do that they react differently they are literally just the mica in there so really really pretty more like a, a typical mica powder but probably more intense colours than a normal mica powder and they have um, that iridescence in them as well and a couple of them show up differently on black versus white too. So um, those are all of the colours that are in um, these new ones that I have that have come out. So really gorgeous, proper rainbow there. If you hey, Actually, yeah, you do actually have a complete rainbow because you've got Richard of York and then you've got green for Gave and then Battle in Vain. So you even have a pink in there as well. So you've got... Uh, the entire rainbow in these eight colours or if you would rather go for more metallic colours then they are bringing those out in the larger ones as well so I just thought I might as well when I have this massive stack of samples I, you can tell I got carried away experimenting with them I thought I might as well just show you um, the cards that I've created so uh, some of them using the Helen colours are using Helen's products so I've used some of her stamps and stencils and ephemera with those ones um, and then with the other brighter colours um, I've just sort of gone with whatever I fancied to use with those but this is one of Helen's stencils that I've used here that's uh, gorgeous different butterflies I'm, I just selectively drew around different butterflies and actually when I did this I drew around the stencil with a pencil, that rhymed, um, but then after I had done that I then outlined uh, with black after I, I had done the watercolouring. So I used the pencil outline that I'd drawn around the stencil with to give me a guide for where I wanted to watercolour and then after that was dry I went around it with a black fine liner to kind of give a more hand drawn kind of look and I picked out some of her pulse um, or like cross kind of designs from one of her stencils as well and I've just used stay strong as a sentiment on this and this is just taking um, a little scoop of the powder some water mixing it into a paint like consistency I and mean, you can also do this in a palette and keep them off to the side as well um, so you can just reactivate them with a little bit more uh, fresh water when you want to use them but um, you might want to experiment with that ratio or if you are going to keep them long term you might want to put a tiny little bit of um, gum arabic in them as well just to keep it in a nice um, consistency that's not going to flake off or powder off or anything but they are really good they stay where you put them other than that yellow the, the yellow is the only one I've had a little issue with but I think it's just the way that I mixed it up because it was fine on this watercolour card here so uh, yeah this is all of Helen's colours so the beautiful pinks and the the blue kind of tones and that deep green as well and I've also splatted as well as painting with them this one is again watercolouring but just using them in strips so this is the brighter colours and just using them in strips rather than painting in an image or something that you've drawn through with a stencil because don't forget all of your stamped images you can paint with them as well. I would recommend maybe stamping in um, a black pigment ink and clear heat embossing your outlines and then using them over the top because if you've ever worked with anything micery you know that um, it kind of obliterates any sort of black lines um, and you can actually see 
on some of the places where I have uh, gone over the top of it with a black pen um, you can see how it's kind of obliterated the black line even though I've drawn over the top of it because that mica really overpowers um, anything that's black really unless you put clear heat embossing over it and it protects the black line and then it will kind of repel as you're watercolouring in with them but this was just um, you know creating my own watercolours with all of the four different colours and just doing random stripes across a card and then I just cut it into a banner shape and put some Sue Wilson dies on there then the next two are using your clear sticky ink which could be Versamark Perfect Medium, the Wow Embossing Powder, the Nouveau Clear Mark, whichever sticky ink that you have and stamping with them and this I stamped with um, some of uh, Helen's sort of block stamps that are in some of her journaling stamp sets from her most recent collection um, and as I was doing this I kind of I didn't really wait for the powder to grab on to the um, ink and I kind of smudged it around and ended up making a bit of a smudgy mess hence why the background is light blue rather than the white card that I started with but um, I, then I was just like oh I'll just play with this background then so I just sprayed it with a load of water to see what happened there I uh, don't think anything really moved that much um, and I just sort of went over with a brush to kind of make the whole background that same blue kind of colour and then I took some of the watered down pink and just splattered it into the wet background and I quite like the result that I got for that so that was just a completely experimental kind of strip there I also splattered with the pink in the background I've used some of her ephemera pieces on there and just used that darker um, sort of shaded lilac kind of colour for the bodies and the centres just making it into a watercolour and painting with that and then this one was using, I've got, still got it over here, um, you know like large bubble wrap that you get in packages um, just pressing that into your sticky ink pad and printing with the large bubble wrap and then dusting the powders on so you can see if you use them in a dusting kind of fashion even though those are really intense colours it gives a subtle kind of effect especially when the, the light kind of catches it it's a very subtle sort of effect on there so um, a, another different kind of way of using it you can make it into a watercolour make them really bold and bright or you can just dust them onto um, clear sticky ink and you get more of a subtle kind of effect so that's a really subtle kind of card then the next one this is actually using a double sided adhesive sheet all over the front of a piece of cardstock and then um, I'd peel back and then burnish down the backing to reveal just a tiny little section um, and then burnish it down so I got a straight line and then I just started with the green used a soft brush burnished that into the um, exposed adhesive tipped off any excess then folded back to the next line just random lines there wasn't any sort of increment that I was actually following I was just sort of going randomly and pulling it back and creasing it down um, and I just did that down the whole background alternating the colours using a soft brush to apply it um, and just covering all of the adhesive so on my little swatches that was just double sided tape just regular you know a 12mm width I think um, and then this was using an entire sheet so you could do all sorts of different techniques with this you could have put a stencil onto your double sided adhesive sheet put the mica powders through pulled it off maybe put gilding flakes on the rest of it or gone with two different colours or brought in some ultra fine glitter or something as well um, but I just did all mica powders with all the different colours and then I just stamped on some of Helen's stamps in black um, over the top. That was just with the Versafine Claire pigment ink and then I just let it dry um, for a while and it's, it's fine on there, it's not coming off when you touch it. So it's actually dried on top of that which is nice. And then I used one of her ephemera pieces which is why I did black stamping on the background to tie in the black that was on the ephemera as well then this next one um, I did a couple of backgrounds I only finished one into a card but this was actually just all of my leftovers when I was watercoloring with them and I just it created all sorts of random mixes of colors and I did Tim Holtz wrinkle free distress kind of technique um, to create a background for this one and then this one um, I this was the original background or the main background really that I had an issue with the yellow coming off because obviously I hadn't mixed it in a good enough ratio I probably put too much powder to water um, but this was the wrinkle free technique but I went color by color um, and did the yellow first then the orange then the red then the purple just adding in different amounts um, and the purple I actually splattered on rather than doing the wrinkle free technique drying them in between uh, you know between the different colours but the yellow was really sort of coming off um, so I decided to instead of scrapping the background because I did like how it had turned out I put a double sided adhesive sheet over the top of it and then put some 
what's it called, iced snow, um, cosmic shimmer, glitter jewels over the top. And this is a really lovely glitter, this one. It's really fine and you can still see completely through it. It doesn't sort of obliterate with the glittery kind of effect. It's a subtle kind of glitter. So although you've lost the mica from the original background, you still managed to save that beautiful background and you've just got a subtle sparkle over the top of it. So I thought that was a different way to kind of show you how I've done that. So the next technique is using cling film with the powders. So this is an age old technique of, you know, usually using like watercolours and then you put cling film on, you scrunch it up a little bit, let it dry and you get this cool effect. But um, instead of using water, because these are powders, you use spray starch first. Uh, I've got this one. Here, I saw uh, Chrissy Stokes do this in a video um, and it works really, really nicely. It is quite um, a strong sort of fragrance to it, so you might kind of want to do it before bed and then, you know, the room's aired out by the next day or have a window open or something. Um, but what you do is you just put your piece of card down, spray a load of spray starch on it, sprinkle the powders in, and then I did actually spray some more over the top to try and like lock the powder in, and then whilst it's all still wet, you put a piece of cling film over the top and sort of like screw it up, and because it's got the spray starch on it rather than just water, it kind of um, locks that pattern in even more. I don't know if you've ever tried this technique, but sometimes when you do it with watercolour, I guess it probably depends how pigmented the watercolour is, what kind of card you're using, how quickly it dried, all those sort of factors. But sometimes you don't get much of a pattern left in the card. But when you do it with the spray starch, whether you are using just powders, or I've done it with pixie powders and... Um, coloured sprays before as well and that works really nicely. Using the spray starch with the cling film it just gives much crisper kind of patterns within whatever you've used underneath it so um, that is using the spray starch first sprinkling the powders on kind of in a sunsetty ombre kind of design um, and then adding a bit more spray starch over the top. I do this in um, an old box because if you spray the spray starch on top of something powdery obviously it's got quite a force behind it with the um, aerosol that's in there um, and it does sort of blow the powder a little bit so do make sure you've sort of, sort of got all of your work surfaces protected from big dust clouds <laughs> of powder depending how much you've put on there um, but yeah I just thought it's a, a really cool, simple background that really shows off the kind of product um, and then you can just finish it off really simply just by using um, a little sentiment. This is part of a Sue Wilson one that says just because, but I just used the word just and then used a wordy to do stay positive because I thought different kind of sentiment to put together and um, I thought it's a small one just to go on that background as well. Then the next way that I've used it, this was using, um, this is again Helen's selection of colours, so this was using one of Helen's stencils and putting um, some white texture paste through the stencil and then after removing the stencil before the texture paste has dried I sprinkled on some of the different powders using a soft soft brush to apply it um, using the different colours in different areas then waiting for it to dry and then coming back in and actually like buffing it in properly um, so to begin with not quite everywhere was covered when I let the paste dry I waited until um, it was dry and then I used the soft brush to kind of like buff it all in so it got round all of the edges of the paste and stuff as well but that is um, one way of kind of adding powders with a texture paste um, and I have also splattered in the background just to bring those colours in I've used one of Helen's stamps there as well and to mimic the sort of black outline of the speech bubble I've added my panel onto a bit of black card as well and I just randomly cut this wonky I really like this at the moment just using my long bladed pair of scissors and cutting a really wonky rectangle or square or anything um, to go on a card and then I've just uh, done the black mat to sort of tie it in with the sentiment as well. Then the next way of using the powders or iridescent mica pigments with uh, texture paste is to use them with clear texture paste and mix them in and I actually got a little bit carried away. I've done six different samples here um, to show you some sort of different ways of using them. So obviously you can put your texture paste straight through a stencil uh, which is one of the easiest kind of ways to apply texture paste and all I did was do a little blob of the clear, four little blobs of the clear, mix the powder into each of the four different blobs and then I started with the yellow on the outside, then the orange, then the red, then the purple going into the centre of this beautiful uh, sort of bursting flower flower design from Francoise and Woodware. Um, it's a, 
a little bit of an old one now but I absolutely adore that design I love the sort of bursting effect of it as well and again I've used the other version of or the other half of that just word so it says because and then I did you're amazing as the wordy on that one but look at the cool results that you can get and really highly pigmented because it's mostly like the powder in something clear it's really sort of highly pigmented because you're getting sort of like layers of the powder within there as well rather than when you're dusting it on to a stamped image you get quite a subtle effect you can get really intense effects with the intense colours as well which is lovely so that's one way of using it with the texture paste and then obviously the stencil was dirty so um, I just sprayed the stencil quite a few times with some water and then pressed it down onto another piece of card and then pressed uh, with a piece of kitchen roll over the back of it and then you get this beautiful effect of like the negative results of the positive design which is really lovely so you've got the two versions of that so you can make another card using the same um, words and sentiment on there or mixing it up and using it a little bit differently as well but I just wanted to show you that you can then use the leftovers on your stencil then with the Helen ones actually I um a pumpkin was asleep in the other room and I didn't want to have to wash a stencil so when I was mixing her colors in with the clear texture paste I um just use them like with a palette knife or a, a media spatula to add them onto my cards so this one I did that turquoisey colour first then I put a swoosh of the darker blue and then I did a swoosh of the pink and because you're putting them in a transparent or clear texture paste it layers up the colour which is really lovely so you do kind of get a purple where the two of them layer over the top of each other and then I did also water down the texture paste with the powder in and splatter it so you can also do that as well if you really were worried about powder coming off or it's something that's going to be touched tons of times and you don't want any risk of any powder coming off mix it with a bit of clear texture paste water it down and then splatter it on you can do that as well or paint with it as well if you want to or you might have uh, glossy accents or crystal lacquer or some kind of product like that that you can mix the powder into and then paint with it as well so all sorts of different ways that you can use these and actually as well if you have cosmic shimmer crystal tints but you want them to have a little bit of a mica sheen to them you could put a little bit of this powder in with a crystal tint and paint with a crystal tint and do a stained glass kind of effect they do have pearl tints um, in the range as well um, but they are more opaque because they've got the pearly aspect to them but I think a little bit of powder in a crystal tint which are translucent uh, you'd get that slightly micery kind of effect but with a translucent colour as well so you could do that too um, and this is a couple of um, Helen's ephemera pieces again and then along the same lines of this um, I have done more of a messy kind of um, abstracty kind of design but this purple colour uh, doesn't exist because you can see here as that overlapped I was like ah oh, that makes a beautiful purple mixing this colour with this colour so I mixed them both together the stuff that I had left and added in purple so you've got the pink purple and then the dark blue as well and then the purple worked perfectly with the ephemera piece as well so that worked really nicely to finish off that really quick kind of card and I love all of these um like distressed kind of bits that you get when you're just scraping it on randomly and haphazardly uh, with a palette knife or a media spatula or something as well so those are those two which are very very similar and then um, I was having so much fun mixing colours um, I did actually mix this colour myself I think it was leftovers from this you can see it's a slightly different dark green I don't know if it actually comes across but this was basically all of the greens and blues mixed together I had leftovers of the two bluey tones and the dark green and I mixed them all together just to create um, a slightly different version of the green tone really and I just uh, did that in a messy swooshy kind of design so I took like one of these um, Nouveau Media spatulas and just sort of went like this to kind of get the the circular swooshy kind of effect on there and again it's really messy but I like that messy look at the moment I'm really enjoying that sort of messy effect where you get like little skippy bits around the edges um, where it's all sort of like where you haven't got much left on here and you drag it around and you just get tiny bits sort of splattering off it gives a really organic different kind of look which obviously is very difficult to recreate um, exactly um, but it just gives a beautiful kind of effect to your project so 
that's how I've done that one and I've done the little spread your wings which is from one of her stamp sets I stamped this little plus sign which is in, in one of her stamp sets as well and then I've also come back in with a paintbrush and just the green uh, mica powder mixed with water to m turn it into a watercolour and then just done a little bit of watercolouring with the crosses and a bit of splatter as well and then this is one of my squishy kind of designs that I like to do. Um, if you watch a lot of my tonic videos, um, I don't know if this video will get the same kind of audience that usually watches my tonic videos, um, but I love doing squishy techniques with all sorts of different tonic products. I do it a lot with Cosmic Shimmer products as well, but I just don't um, always film all of my Cosmic Shimmer products or projects because I make so many of them. Um, sometimes I just run out of time and or I'd have hundreds of videos to edit and I'd never get around to editing them all. Um, but this is using the two blues and the green, just putting blobs of them onto one piece of card, taking another piece of card, squishing them together, pulling them apart and you get two different backgrounds. I did have the other background here earlier but I am... Um not quite sure where I put it now um, but you get two identical kind of backgrounds um, and you get all of this gorgeous peaky texture and this again was mixed in with the clear texture paste as well so you get a really um, thick kind of texture that really sort of holds its texture basically because it's designed to be a texture paste it really holds its texture but you could have mixed this in with maybe like a clear gesso or a collage medium or something that's transparent that is going to dry and not be sticky so you couldn't I don't know whether you could, could really do it with glue maybe you could do it with glue I don't know if it would have a bit of tack over time or if it got hot it might get tacky but any sort of like translucent um kind of product that you have maybe you have like um a crackle paste a clear crackle paste you could mix it in with that kind of stuff as well so just have fun playing with all of your translucent products um, and then I just put another one of her ephemera pieces in the center this is going back to using the brighter colours um, that I was just been playing with the last couple of days um, and I don't know if I've edited the video yet, hopefully I will have, I think it's the next one I want to edit. Um, I did a full up close video on all of the Creative Expressions Halloween pro products for this year, for 2023, um, and I've just used the gorgeous witch from one of Sue Wilson's sets, uh, the cat, I don't think it was with the witch was it? I can't remember now. Uh, the bat is a fall away one from a paper cuts die set. The stars I think are from paper cuts, they're just fall away ones. And then uh, I think it's one of Jamie's greetings, the scary greetings. But I just put all of my extras in a pot and then I just thought, oh this looks like really Halloween-y kind of colours. So um, I just went through and picked out some of the extra die cuts that I had left over. And I've added the witch and the cat with some 3D foam, um, just so she casts more of a, a shadow on the background as well. And then again, this was done the same way as this but it's using the different colours because I hadn't done uh, much with texture paste for this colourway so I wanted to uh, throw them in as well so Creative Expressions have got some different samples with that too um, and this was using the purple and then I think I actually mixed the purple and the red together to give me more of a, a ready purple tone and then this was actually the orange mixed in with that ready purple mixture and you didn't actually get a brown um, which is what I was expecting because if you mix yellow and purple together you get brown so I presumed orange orange and purple would give more of a brownie colour but I actually quite like that colour that it gave it gives like an aut autumny kind of colour like um, a burnt orange sort of colour so um, if you want to just do some sort of autumn project mixing a bit of the red the purple and the orange together does give a really nice autumny colour tone as well and it kind of mutes the colours a little bit they're not quite so bright and in your face if you're mixing some of the colours together and obviously all of these samples I did a bunch of samples just using Helen's collection of four colours and a bunch of samples just using the other four colours um, but cross uh, cross pollinate them, mix them together, make a even pinkier purple, make a slightly purpley pink, you know, mix all of the different tones together, make a really uh, bluey purple by mixing in with the, the deeper blue colours as well. It's just uh, for doing the samples for Creative Expressions. I'd done all of the ones with these and then they asked me to do some with the other colours and I still had these ones with me. So I thought, well, I might as well do this video whilst I've got all of the samples here to show you. It means I don't have to recreate anything to be able to show you for a video as well. I really really like how that one turned out though. Um, then uh, obviously one of the best ways of using Cosmic Shimmer powdery kind of products, if you've ever watched any of um, Sue Wilson's videos or demonstrations and stuff as well, she loves doing this courting crystal technique which has been around for a long time and this is the traditional courting crystal technique. Um, 
I did actually just do um, a normal sized panel of this but I managed to get a piece to go out uh, behind this oval and an extra banner for another card as well. I was just going to use it all on one card but I quite like the fact that I could stretch it to go for two cards even though it was just one small area. So to do a caught in crystal technique do let me know if you want me to do um, a tutorial video on this because it might actually be something that a lot of you are interested in but there are so many different ways that you can do court in crystal but the way that um sue wilson always used to show it is you start with your acetate you cover your acetate with some of the cosmic shimmer clear crystal lacquer i don't have a bottle of it to hand because i just chucked mine in the bin because i'd finished it um because i you know done quite a few of these backgrounds over the years and i finally got to the end of my bottle um but you put some of the clear crystal lacquer on there then you sprinkle in some gorgeous glittery sort of things so I went with to go with the two colours of the iridescent mica pigments I went with berry bling and cherry red holographic glitter bits I love their holographic ones they're so beautiful um sprinkle that in to the clear crystal lacquer that's on your acetate and then you sprinkle in your powders whether this be the iridescent mica pigments where I use the purple which is purple agate or the ruby flame I, I mix both of those together um, but you could be using these or you could be using pixie powders, pixie bursts, pixie sparkles, um, any of your other mica powder kind of products. It doesn't matter if they're the kind of mica powder that doesn't have a binding agent in them because you're putting them onto the crystal lacquer. So it kind of binds it all in anyway. And then you just take a sheet of uh, like gift wrapping white tissue, scrunch it up, press it onto the back of it whilst the lacquer is all still wet, let it dry and then you leave the tissue paper on the back of it and trim it to the size that you want and you get this beautiful kind of result and I did actually back this onto red card as well so if there's any areas that I missed because these are just mica powders and not a pixie powder or something that would burst out and give you the colour um I put it back onto a piece of red card so that you wouldn't see any sort of like patchy areas where there maybe wasn't quite so much of the mica powder on there but really really pretty you can get gorgeous results with the court and crystal i've done uh, quite a few probably sped up videos over the years um doing this kind of a technique uh sheena douglas also always used to show it with the i think it's pledge um floor polish which i do have a bottle of and i have done a sped up video or two using that as well you can also um just do it with glue as well which is the next sample that i'll show you too but these are the two that i created from that actual courting crystal and these are some of sue's um, nested ovals this best wishes was from her recent uh i think it was called love and romance collection it had like anniversary and stuff in it as well um and then this i just had some of the purple left over and i just scribbly drew it in a circle and then because i had a, a leftover piece of this banner i do i took a um a red sparkly gel pen and drew some red into that circle as well and then just used the little banner over the top and you can see how well it holds together um you know because you've got the crystal lacquer it's really sticking the all of the products and the tissue paper to the back of it so you really can just cut it into whatever shape you want or you can put it behind a frame so you don't have any of the um open sort of edges of it as well and i've just used a couple of other sue wilson dies on there to finish that one off too and then the final one that i did is using it's the same kind of idea a caught in crystal sort of technique but i didn't put tissue on the back of it and i used glue instead so for this one I knew that I wanted to put a white frame around the edge so I took a piece of acetate that was the same size as my normal size of card and then I took some of my foam tape and I cut it into strips to go all the way around to make a frame as if I was turning this into a shaky card or something um, but then I turned it over so I'm working on the side that has the foam tape on the back of it um, and I'm working in the aperture area and I flooded that area with cosmic shimmer glue and then I sprinkled in a tiny bit of um Midas Touch holographic glitter bits, another beautiful colour. I only just got Midas Touch and the uh, Cherry Red, but I absolutely adore those two colours. Um, sprinkled a little bit of that in and then went in with my soft brush and tapped lots of the different um, orange, yellow and red powders onto there as well. Um, and you can see the cool results that it gives. And I have also backed this, you can just about see it in the corners here, backed it onto um, Gold Mirror Card as well so any areas that didn't have any product kind of showing have got gold mirror card coming through them and um 
the reason why I did it this way is maybe you don't have any crystal lacquer and you want to try this kind of technique straight away or maybe you don't have any tissue paper and you want to try it straight away this is a, a nice way of trying this technique but not um, having to have all of the other kind of products you basically just need your powders any kind of powder that you want to use a bit of glitter and your glue so it's a really simple kind of one to do um, and the way you're sort of putting this onto the, your project no one can touch the back of it so you know if anything's not quite dried properly maybe there's excess powder um, normally the tissue paper from a court in crystal technique would hold all of that in and um, if any of that is left you, no one's going to touch it because it's hidden it's on the opposite side of the acetate we're showing the the smooth side of the acetate which when you're working on it and creating it is kind of the back but when you finish it it ends up being the front so um that is the sort of results that you get from that kind of technique as well and this is just another sue wilson die which you can see where i got the just because from those other two cards earlier as well i've just put this in the center you could also have made this aperture um properly fit this um this word die but originally I was just going to put the just because from the white that falls out of this but I really liked having the block on there and I decided to put it off center just because why not I mean it would have had an uneven border around the edge of it the top and bottom would have been a little bit wider than the sides but I quite liked just moving it to the bottom I thought it was quite nice um, a different kind of uh, way of placing rectangles you don't have to put them directly inside each other so um, I hope you enjoyed this up close video looking at the um, brand new because all of these eight colours here are brand new um, Cosmic Shimmer Iridescent Mica Pigments there is the four really bright beautiful sunset kind of colours and then there's also the four colours that are going to be part of um, Helen Colebrook's collection so she's got some more journaling uh, bit, bits and pieces coming out so I will obviously wait until they've come out before I put this video up but um, yeah they work really nicely using them with stencils just freehand watercolouring using them with double sided adhesive sheets putting them into your clear texture paste putting them on top of your white texture paste doing caught in crystal techniques watercolouring with them I think I already said that um, stamping with sticky ink and dusting them over the top like a regular mica powder as well there's so many different ways of using these beautiful iridescent mica pigments so really hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and i will see you again in the next one